July internationals and we see England hosting the Eagles from America. Uh, kind of like the Wales and Canada game. It's another one that's predicted to be a wee bit lopsided, but it's always good to see some of the less common matchups. You know, we don't usually see England taking on the States or Wales taking on Canada. Uh, I mean, we do at World Cups. It was 45 points to 7 at the World Cup in 2019. But yeah, this is a first in terms of like it's the first game being held in July between these two sides. It's the first game outside of Rugby World Cup for a while. So uh, yeah, good to see. Hopefully we get to see more of that going forward. But it is third up against 16th. Though there is a bit of a gulf between these sides. Though remember the English team is without their British and Irish Lions. So uh, maybe that's one uh, one advantage anyway to the States, although they are still predicted to get beaten pretty handedly. Um, we'll go through the lineups, and uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Uh, it's like, I think, 1 o'clock in the morning for me in New Zealand on, on Monday, so it's a pretty hair, hairy one, but, um, oh well, how often do you get to see England play the States? Not that often, so it's kind of worth getting up for. England have named what... I think will be a pretty pleasing lineup for a lot of England fans. Eddie Cop's a fair bit of stick for being less than generous in naming guys outside his kind of few favourites, but he's had to with many of them being out. He's gone with a front row of Genge, Langdon and Hayes. So you've got two debutantes there. Uh, Genge is the experienced guy of the three and uh, his reserve hooker, Blamire, is also... Um, going to get his debut if he comes on, likewise Davison. So, yeah, I think Albano's got like one cap. So it's very light on caps, but Genji is uh, is certainly a fiery customer, and as I said, he's been around the block for quite some time. Bloody hell, those birds are loud. They're having a ball today. The weather is beautiful, if a bit chilly. Um, but yeah, England have named pretty youthful front row there. Uh, McNally and Yules as the second row, and as I mentioned, it's... Um, it's pretty... God, those birds are so distracting. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty good mix of, of experience and youth. Yules has been around the block for ages as well. I forget how many caps he's accumulated. I'm going to shut the door. Hold on a second. Right, what are we talking about? We're talking about second rowers. Um, yeah, Yules and McNally are you guys. So McNally is your guy on debut. And then the, uh, the Lucy's is Ludlow, who is captain and on debut as well. That's unusual in itself. Uh, Underhill is there at 7 and Chick is there at 8 so uh, I'm a little bit disappointed there's no Don Brandt if you can still moan at Eddie for not giving you the guys you want but I guess some of the Harlequins guys maybe needed a little bit of a rest uh, Underhill will be there with those bone crunching tackles and he may have an eye on the Lions situation determining uh, if there are kind of any injuries or not but um, yeah you know Underhill is going to put in a cracking shift uh, and yeah it'll be interesting to see how Ludlow goes on his debut as captain that's a, a big responsibility Everyone has to be absolutely over the moon about the 19 combo of Randall and Smith. People have been calling for these guys for a phenomenally long time. Uh, Marcus Smith had a blinder in the um, in the Premiership final the other day. So, yeah, there's no reason they shouldn't light the pitch up. But uh, it's a new combination between Randall and Smith. I'm not sure if they've played together at age group level. But either way, they're both crack and exciting young players so the future of english rugby could rest on their shoulders at some point let's see how they go against the states believe it or not it's a it's a capped midfield with lawrence and slade both of these guys lawrence has got like six caps but in this squad that counts as pretty experienced uh, alongside slade so that's a that's a good midfield hopefully lawrence gets some ball I feel like in the few caps that he's had, he's not been able to really impose himself on the game. Uh, Mellon's not going to sing it, and Stewart are the back three. Stewart's the only uncapped guy of the back three. I mean, not going to sing is a bit of a big ball runner, isn't he? So he could have a field day. Uh, Stewart is a guy you guys have been uh, saying I need to look out for uh, in terms of his kind of potential going forward as well. Ben Curry's on the bench, so he'll get his first cap. Uh, Jacob Umanga, likewise. Ludlam's on the bench. Uh, Robson as well so um yeah it's a it's a different from normal England side which is uh which is pleasing uh the states again uh kind of like the Canada team it's a team that I'm a lot less familiar with helpfully I did watch some MLR the other day and a few of these names were in the games that I watched uh Anu'u who plays in France is your loose head so he's a classy guy 
so Sene Fagai is at hooker and Mullen is at tight head. So two of those guys, the props, were both at the uh, at the World Cup. So that's kind of good news. Peterson is a bit of a journeyman at this point. I think he's playing for Newcastle at the moment, right? He's been around the blocks for a long time. Uh, and Kaveta, that's your your lock and draw. Both pretty big units, like well over two meters tall. And uh, Fa'anana, Schultz, Hatting, and Dolan are the back row. Hatting's on his debut. Dolan's the only guy who rings a bell. He was a big tackling machine at the Rugby World Cup. So I guess we can probably expect to see more of that at number eight, especially if the US guys are under the pump for a while. Uh, De Haas and Carti are the 19 combo. Obviously, there's no McGinty. He is out injured. De Haas was at the World Cup, I think mainly as the bench guy. And... Um, I believe Luke Cardi is the brother of the Irish international, Jack Cardi. So that's a bit of a connection. He'll get his debut. Good luck to him. Uh, hopefully they get some pill for him to actually have a throw around with. Uh, Campbell and Bracky are the midfield. Campbell is captain for this one. Um, I think he was at the World Cup as well. Bit of a tackling machine, plus pretty dangerous ball in hand, which is good to see. Marcel Bracky was kind of in and out of the starting lineup at the force, the Western force in the Super Rugby season just gone. Uh, Mika Cruz, Mike Teo, and Will Hooley are the back three. Cruz is on his debut. He plays for Utah Warriors. I did see him play the other day. I think he got a try. Uh, Teo is a bit of a unit for a winger, so he played fullback in the game that I watched the other day. I think he plays alongside Cruz. And uh, Hooley, I think he's been at Saracens for the most recent season. Another guy who's been around a few different teams. He should be a solid uh, solid guy to have at fullback. Um, Telfa Ete is the reserve hooker. I think most of us know him pretty well. He's been around the blocks for quite some time as well. Uh, they've got a couple of debutants in Harmon and Baska on the bench. Baska is the reserve halfback. He was, um, again, I watched the Utah Warriors game. He seems pretty lively. It is a 6-2 split because they've got uh, Wu Ching and Hermes as their loose forward replacement. So it's a 6-2 split uh, for them. Likewise, the, the English pack though. So could be a long battle up front and uh yeah 6-2 splits seem to be all the rage at the moment everyone's copying the box anyway i know they didn't invent it but yeah a few of the big names out like i mentioned mcginty lamosatelli uh la ck all these guys tony lamborn so it's a it's a much changed lineup from the one that we saw play at the rugby World cup but then there's still the consistency amongst like at least half the squad so yeah, a bit of a mix for Gary Gold's guys. Uh, as I mentioned, they are predicted to be on the wrong side of this one. The Americans, uh, 38 points is what the bookies are saying uh, over here in New Zealand. And uh, 31 points is what the rugby forecast algorithm says. So yeah, predicted to be a pretty long day at the office. But again, playing at Twickenham against England is not an experience that comes along all that often so hopefully the Eagles guys make the most of it and as I said Eddie doesn't rotate his lineup that often so a good chance for some of these young uh, uncapped English guys to really put their hand up going forward um, they've mentioned that like you know Tom Curry and Underhill and whatnot they did that in previous kind of July internationals before so um yeah we'll see who kind of impresses Eddie from this couple of games. Anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts and I will talk to you again soon. See you later.